Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's event. Uh, we are going to go ahead and get it kicked off in just a couple of minutes. But uh, before we do, I, I first like to just double check. Uh, I did a Navy uh, test before this, but uh, now that we're live and I'm on stage, I just always like to double check that everybody can see me okay, uh, everybody can hear me okay. Feel free to let me know in the chat off to the right hand side there. Yes to both. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much. Can see Anne here. Amazing, perfect. So yeah, so the uh, the chat functions down in the bottom right corner there. Uh, we've also got a questions tab, uh, polls tab, and a people tab down there. Um, so the questions are meant for. Uh, so if you guys have any questions throughout the entire presentation, we're going to do a Q and A session at the very end. So put your questions into the questions tab, and uh, while we're presenting. Uh, we, we likely won't get over to them until the end there, but that's kind of the whole point. We want to uh, answer them as a class with everybody sort of thing so that uh, if anybody uh, didn't think of the same question or if they had it and they were curious about the answer, uh, they can they can see the response to that too. So uh, that's the questions tab. There's also a polls tab in there. Um, I have put a few polls in for everyone, so feel free to fill out some information on the, the polls there for me. I think it's just asking questions like uh, what what sort of uh, industry you're currently working in. So uh, feel free to uh, to fill that out. And then, of course, the people is just going to show uh, the people as they're kind of coming and going in here. Um, but that's it. That's uh, that's the uh, the space that we're in here. Uh, my name is Tyler. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the event officially kicked off here. Uh, I'll move this part over to the big part of the screen here so everyone can see. And just going to get my stuff set up here. So uh, so yeah, um, today's session is on our game development and our game design uh, boot camps. Uh, we offer both through CircuitStream and um, different um, camps through uh, the boot camps through the different university partners that we have. So I'm going to share uh, some of that information for everybody in just a moment. I'll start off, uh, like I said, by introducing myself. So uh, my name is Tyler Trapp. Uh, I am the marketing events manager at CircuitStream, uh, also uh, the event host for today's event. Uh, and I have been here uh, for just over three years. I uh, love the company. I uh, love working in tech education. Uh, before this, I was actually working in uh, tourism and hospitality, so uh, quite a, a different industry than where I am now. So. Uh, we will also have a guest speaker joining us in a little bit today. I'm going to go through some information here first, um, but uh, I will invite him up in just a few minutes. Uh, Nicholas is one of our game development bootcamp students, and I'm going to ask him some questions about his experience in our course and his future career plans. So, uh, But before I do that, uh, let me share a little bit more information with everyone here. Um, I'm going to start by, um, well, the, the purpose of today's event, I should say, is to show everyone how you can break into the gaming industry uh, with no background experience. Um, and I'm going to start here by uh, sharing some information about us at CircuitStream. So uh, we began in 2015 through a network of developers, designers, and creators. And we're now a leading provider of technology learning and game development and design, uh, product design, augmented and virtual reality, product management, and software development. Uh, we partner with industry leading companies and we provide courses and training to those looking to learn more about emerging technologies. Uh, since our start in 2015, we have educated over 50,000 learners globally and we are constantly updating our curriculum to stay ahead of the curve. And you can see on the screen there some of our uh, co uh, corporate partners. Uh, we uh, certainly have much more than that, but just a little snapshot of some of our uh, corporate partners there for the, uh, the gaming courses. Uh, so at CircuitStream, our main goal is to bridge academics with industry to shape real world experiences and to teach the skills of the future through innovative learning experiences. So you may be wondering, how do we achieve this? Uh, we do this through project-based learning. Uh, so when we design our curriculums, we begin with employer data and research. And based on that, we create experiences and projects to provide our students with career-ready skills. Uh, taking this approach allows us to partner with top universities in North America and to provide technology education for both teenagers and adult learners. Uh, in fact, we're the only Canadian technology education company currently partnered with these universities to provide these types of boot camps and courses. And on that note too, I don't think I have a slide built into this presentation for this here today, but we do also offer uh, teen courses, as I mentioned, uh, for teens between the ages of 13 and 18. So. 
Uh, if anybody knows anyone who's uh, kind of within that that age uh, bracket, if they're in high school and they're looking to kind of get a jump on uh, tech skills for the future, uh, if you're interested at all, feel free to, uh, to reach out. We can definitely provide more information there. Uh, those uh, courses are also provided through UFT, uh, UBC, and uh, some of our university partners there. So, And because we rely on industry employer data and information to create the uh, educational content that we teach, uh, our students develop in-demand applied skills that actually matter in market. Uh, this prepares them to seamlessly transition into the workforce and confidently tackle real-world challenges. Uh, some of the most common feedback we hear from people who are registering for our boot camps, uh, especially if they've come out of more traditional forms of education is that uh, they, they kind of learn some of the base skills, but they're not necessarily, um, you know, market ready. They're not, they're not ready to kind of launch out into the industry and uh, jump into a job. Um, it's, you know, quite a bit different. So uh, that's something we pride ourselves on uh, building that into our, our curriculums for our boot camps here. We also uh, iterate on the course materials constantly in order to provide our students with the most up-to-date programs and tools. On screen here, this is a snapshot of some of the tools used in our game development and our game design boot camps, including uh, both Unity and Unreal Engines. Uh, Circuit Stream also takes pride in uh, consistent and positive feedback uh, and reviews from our uh, the students uh, that we have. So uh, we currently have a 4.3 Trustpilot rating and 92% of our job seeking students uh, utilized our boot camp student career services from the last time we did the poll there. In terms of our course outcomes uh, from 2023, 92% uh, of the graduates have found employment in relevant roles and 25% of them uh, actually achieved that milestone before they even completed the course, which was really cool. So a little bit about boot camps in general, uh, structured boot camps maintain high quality, consistent teaching standards and provide organized curriculums that allow for smooth progression from basic to advanced concepts. Students in boot camps benefit from direct feedback from experienced instructors, uh, which is crucial for grasping and understanding complex skills and overcoming learning hurdles. Uh, so I mentioned Unity before, and uh, a lot of people uh, may or may not uh, know what Unity is, but Unity is the primary tool that we use in our game development bootcamp. Uh, it is one of the world's leading uh, platforms for creating and operating interactive real-time 3D content. You can use it to create games, visualizations, immersive experiences, and much more. And as you can see on the screen right now, 70% of the top 1,000 mobile games were made using Unity, and uh, Unity creators are located all around the world. That's why we chose Unity. Uh, here's some uh, examples of uh, games that are made in Unity, probably some on there that you would recognize, Pokemon Go, Beat Saber, Monument Valley, um, Among Us, Fall Guys. I've played a lot of these myself, so... And now for the Unreal Engine. Unreal is the primary tool that we use in our game design. So game development, we're using Unity kind of as the tool. Uh, game design, we're predominantly using um, Unreal as the tool on this side. Uh, and Unreal, just in case anyone uh, didn't know what that was, it's designed uh, by Epic Games in 1998 and is another le global leading platform used for creating and operating interactive real-time 3D content and has a comprehensive suite of tools for game designers and developers to use. Uh, over 50% of the next-gen games are being built in the Unreal Engine. And on screen, you can see some examples of games that were created using Unreal. Uh, again, there's definitely some games here that are recognizable. I've played a bunch of these myself. I've definitely lost uh, quite a few hours to Fortnite over the, over the years, especially during uh, COVID. So, uh, All right, so now I'm going to take a look at some career opportunities. Uh, the gaming industry has grown significantly in recent years, and with that, the opportunities have as well. Uh, actually, before I jump into some of these slides, I should mention, I don't think I did at the very beginning here, this whole presentation will be recorded. So um, if anybody's, uh, you know, if you see an exciting stat on the screen or if you're excited about something you see, uh, feel free to take a picture, a screenshot, write down a note, uh, but you're also welcome to just kind of relax and enjoy the presentation and you'll get a full recording of this after the event has finished. It should be sent to your email. So, uh, all right, so for career opportunities, uh, becoming a game developer or designer can be a rewarding career choice for individuals who are passionate about gaming, of course. Uh, but also for those who have a flair for creative and interactive uh, experiences, problem solving, and just technology in general. Uh, on screen, you can see some of the top reasons why people would choose to work as game developers and as game designers. In the US, there are over 3,000 game studios employing almost 300,000 people. 
And in Canada, there's been tremendous growth over the last few years with over 900 active game studios, uh, which that number is a 35% increase since just 2019, which is crazy, 35% increase in the last few years. Uh, not only that, uh, the game industry contributed over $5 billion to Canada's GDP, which is a 29% increase over the last four years as well. And as you can see, uh, clearly with these numbers, there's a lot of potential in the industry. Uh, with the global game uh, video game market, sorry, revenue projected to hit $383 billion, uh, this year, which is crazy. So again, see, uh, this this will all be sent out to everybody. So if you want any of those stats, it'll be in the, uh, the recorded presentation there. Uh, some opportunities for game designers. So as a game designer, you'll have the power to shape exciting new games. Uh, the average salary for game designer is $120,000 per year in the U.S. and in Canada. And uh, there's a range of different job titles um, that you could get. You know, basically, if you go through a course in game design and you're looking to be hired, um, there will be jobs posted as game designer. But there's going to be other things too, like level designer, systems designer, um, just some other titles there. So just be sure to kind of uh, broaden your range when you're looking for opportunities and make sure you're not just looking for opportunities titled kind of game designer sort of thing. Uh, for game developers, currently there are over 8,000 job openings for game developers in the United States alone, with the average salary is sitting at about 121,000 annually. Um, like I said before, it's a great time to join the industry. Uh, for game developers, some of the titles you could get uh, game developer, as I mentioned, of course, but also things like game engineer, uh, game programmer, things along those lines too. So um, yeah, just make sure you're kind of looking for all opportunities when, uh, when you're looking for um, positions there. Uh, these are just a few of the many companies that hire for the positions we mentioned on the previous slides. Uh, many well-known companies like EA Games, Rockstar, Epic Games are hiring in this space. Uh, but there's also a ton of smaller indie game studios like Cloudhead Games, Extremely OK Games, uh, and they hire in this space um, aggressively as well. And oftentimes, I mean, usually larger studios, it's a little harder to get in the gates or it might take a little bit more time or experience. Uh, they do often run internship programs, so those are great things from larger studios. Um, but often when people are coming out of courses, um, you know, university programs, boot camps, whatever the case may be, um, smaller studios like the um, the indie studios here are great opportunities because they're looking uh, to bring in a bunch of interns. Sometimes they're paid, sometimes they're not, but um, just just great ways to kind of get uh, to break into the industry, I guess, and get some experience uh, so you can put that on your resume because um, it's, you know, it's always a catch-22. You finish a course and you apply for your first job and the first job asks you what experience you have and you say, I just took a course and they say, well, we want real world experience. So uh, Bootcamp will give you some of that, which is great because we do uh, hands-on projects throughout and you actually build a portfolio. Um, but these are kind of uh, cool places to look at when, you, when you've gone through the course as well for opportunities to gain some further experience, uh, some uh, smaller studios like um, indie studios is what I mean. So let me jump into the next one. Uh, there's also a lot of uh, companies hiring for remote positions. I included this information here uh, just because we get this question quite a bit. Um, you know, I'm Bob Smith, I live out in the middle of a small town in Manitoba. I'm just making something up right now. Um, and I'd really like to be a game developer designer, but I'm just, I'm worried that if I take this course, there won't be anything available for me uh, directly where I'm located. So, I mean, obviously there's an opportunity for you to physically relocate um, to places where there are more opportunities, um, but just uh, for some peace of mind, and uh, I know lots of people that get hired for these, um, these are just some companies that have all posted positions for remote roles within the last month that I've taken note of. Um, and I do this exercise all the time. I just go in and check in, um, you know, like Indeed, ZipRecruiter, um, Job Gather, Glassdoor, like all these different uh, areas. And I just take a, a quick look to see what's out there. And there's always a ton of remote positions available. So um, just in case anybody had any questions about that, I, I like to share those details with uh, with everybody too. And some, some cool uh, studios listed here for sure. And I'm going to share some information on the actual boot camps now. We have two boot camps that focus on gaming. Uh, the Game Design Boot Camp is meant for those who are looking to enter the gaming industry as a designer, uh, those who want to establish their own company or utilize game design skills in their current roles. Uh, the great thing about this boot camp is project based, like I just mentioned. Uh, so you'll gain practical skills while working on real world projects. Uh, over the course of the 30 weeks, you'll learn to analyze game design elements, conceive gameplay concepts, 
design game mechanics, create functioning game prototypes, and test novel gameplay ideas. Uh, you'll also learn about the role of a game designer and its various specializations and how they fit into game production overall. So that's a little bit about the uh, game design bootcamp. Uh, the Unity Game Development Bootcamp is designed for people uh, looking to get into the gaming industry as a developer. Uh, again, those who are looking to start their own companies or those who are looking to bring Unity or game development skills to their current role. Uh, this course is completely beginner friendly. Both of them are, in fact, uh, the uh, development one does tackle some advanced concepts um, in terms of coding as you go through. I mean, they'll, they'll both tackle advanced concepts. It's just the additional coding aspect that comes along on the development side. Um, so we have some additional support there uh, built in for that. Um, but the great thing about the bootcamp, just like the design one, is that it's also project based. You'll learn concepts in class and apply them to real life projects. And you get to create your own idea as the final um, project throughout the course. You do like a capstone project at the end. Uh, you get to work with a team of other students, or you can work on your own for this. And you can create a game or experience from start to finish using these skills that you learn throughout the bootcamp. Uh, our students, of course, really enjoy this part because it allows them to uh, not only get the experience, but also build up a portfolio of projects to demonstrate their skills and what they've learned. Um, absolutely, absolutely crucial when you're applying for, for uh, you know, junior roles. That's like I said before, that's that's the biggest thing people are going to want to see uh, that you know what you're talking about. They're going to want to see that you have some, um, you know, some skills in the areas that they're they're looking to hire for. And if you can kind of present that in the form of a portfolio, that's going to help you stand out uh, tenfold compared to somebody who's not presenting it that way. So now a lot of positions may not even hire you without a portfolio. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, two you finish the course with the portfolio, like I said, but you'll also get um, the badges that you see on screen and you get lifetime access to our circuit stream uh, community on discord. It has over, I think it's over 1200 or 1500 members. And the uh, community is a great place to network, uh, get help on your projects, ask questions, find out about our career opportunities, uh, or just, you know, connect with like-minded uh, people that are kind of going through the same thing. And the cool thing about this is, um, as you go through our course, you are entered into this network on Discord. And once you finish the course, we don't boot you out. We don't ask you to leave. There's no time limit there. You don't have like six months to, you know, ask questions and connect with people before you automatically get booted from the server. Uh, nothing like that. It's uh, you, you get to stay in this community for life for as long as you choose to. Uh, and we encourage uh, new students uh, to connect with past students, uh, you know, new students to connect with new students, past students to connect with past students, whatever the case may be. Um, just to collaborate, uh, get assistance, network, find opportunities for careers, um, you know, whatever the case may be. We, we see a lot of developers and de designers working together to build games after they finish the courses. Uh, they're submitting games to Steam. They're, you know, um, finding a, a, about career opportunities through just people that they connect with and meet through this uh, um, on Discord through this community. So uh, really, really important, really valuable having the, uh, the network here. And uh, in terms of the game development bootcamp specifically, you do get additional certification through Unity. Um, so you do have to write an exam or a test to, to gain this level of certification, uh, but it generally costs about $450 and the cost of this is built into our development bootcamp. So you'd be certified through CircuitStream and you'd have uh, credentials from us and the university partner, um, but then you can take it one step further. The education in our bootcamp should prepare you to write this test. And then if you go through and you submit and you pass this one, you also get direct certification from Unity. Uh, it's worth noting that we actually worked with Unity not only to create our certification for our courses, but we actually worked with Unity very early on to help them create their levels of certification for their developer roles uh, directly through Unity. So uh, we're very closely tied with them. Um, and having both levels of, cert of certification, um, obviously you get the network through CircuitStream. I think if you do this certification through Unity, of course you get the extra badge, but I think there's also additional networking opportunities that you can connect through their network too. So uh, super beneficial and uh, the cost of that is included in our develop uh, game development course. And then in terms of career development, uh, all of our boot camps are structured with ample career support and guidance. Uh, we have circuit stream career labs that teach students how to leverage technical and behavioral strengths gain awareness of our the uh, sorry of the digital ecosystem uh, create compelling portfolios elevate digital presence learn how to network effectively and become interview ready for industry jobs our career and networking support really sets our programs apart from others that you may find out there 
Uh, every student has different objectives coming in, but for those who are looking for new jobs or to improve on their current positions, uh, they find the aspect, uh, this aspect of our course is incredibly helpful. Um, I don't know if I shared this before, but in fact, 92% of our 2022 to 2023 grant game development graduates utilized our career services support. Ooh, I am stumbling over my words here. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Uh, and then as a part of the career support, our boot camps also come with student pitch day, which happens towards the end of the program. Uh, students have the opportunity to showcase their capstone projects to hiring and industry partners. Uh, this event is a, an amazing way to add people to your network, to be considered for any job openings that you may have or that they may have, I should say, uh, or to just receive some feedback on your projects from hiring managers and people who are actually working in the industry, which in, in itself is incredibly, uh, incredibly valuable. So. Uh, this is, oh, sorry, folks, if that was loud right away. That was really loud on my end here. Try and turn that down a bit. Uh, so this is a little preview of a game from a former student. Uh, this is one that they made for their capstone project. Uh, this is by no means going to show the full scope of the game. It's just meant to be a quick little snapshot showing you uh, the fun characters kind of moving around in their world for just uh, 20 seconds here. So. All right, there we go. That was made by uh, Emiliano Fantasia in the Unity Game Development Bootcamp, one of our previous cohorts there. Um, and, oh yeah, so we, we host a private Ask Me Anything sessions uh, with industry professionals throughout the year as well. Uh, these are some of the ones that we've had for 2024. Um, we may have some still coming up here. I'd have to connect with the career team to see who we've had in and who's coming up. But uh, these are just some folks here that are coming in. And basically, these are private sessions just for our students uh, where they can ask uh, working industry professionals direct questions and get feedback um, as they go through the course. So. Uh, in addition to the pitch day at the end, this is just another way for them to kind of connect with industry professionals throughout uh, the course too. So, all right. So without further ado, I am going to officially invite today's guest speaker up on stage. Uh, Nicholas Kayla is one of our game development bootcamp students, as I mentioned before, and uh, I'm going to ask him some questions about his course experience. So uh, welcome up on stage, Nicholas. Hello, everybody. Hello, and I'm going to make your screen big there. There we go. Uh, cool. All right. So I'm going to ask uh, Nick some questions here just about his course experience and kind of the future. And uh, then we'll do some uh, audience Q&A together. Uh, on that note, too, I should mention, I, I see that there's some questions in the questions tab there yet. I, I haven't seen what they are, but I can see there are some building up. Uh, and just in case anybody came in after I said this earlier, we are going to do the Q&A at the very end here. So if you stick around for another half an hour, 40 minutes, we will be able to do the uh, the audience Q&A with you guys too. So, uh, all right. So the first question for you here, Nicholas, um, <laughs> this is just a fun one. Uh, what do you enjoy about gaming? What's your favorite game and why? Oh, man. Is there really truly one answer to that? <laughs> gaming, it's just like, it's the best. Like whether it's playing a good game or being able to play with your friends or just having like a good experience with some random person you've never met before, just in the middle of nowhere. Like, oh, it's awesome. Um, and to the favorite game one, I don't think I could have one answer for that either. It bounces around so much, but if I had to really say one, probably, Probably God of War, the new one, the newest one, not newest, from like 2018 or whatever, God of War, for sure. Nice. What are you playing the most right now? Right now, NHL or Minecraft. <laughs> Can't See, go like wrong the, with Minecraft. I like to hear the variety. I just always like to hear what, what types of games uh, everyone likes to play. And you just hit on a few different, completely different types of games, which I love. So uh, cool. All right. Uh, so what, uh, initially attracted you to the game development bootcamp? Well, I mean, uh, I was going through a rough patch of like applying to universities and stuff in my area and getting rejected again and again and again. And I kept getting these ads for this bootcamp 
become a game developer in 30 weeks. How could I say no? But then I was like, oh, it's a little too good to be true. And I found myself in one of these info sessions, um, kind of sussing it out. And from there, I was like, I think this is legit. I'm going to do this. Um, so I applied. I had a, a few calls, actually, with a, a recruitment officer for Circuit Stream. And then uh, I was enrolled. And that was that was the beginning, really. I love that. Yeah, I love that. Uh, I guess our advertising uh, advertising is working on the marketing side, but um, yeah, no, we're we're definitely legit. I'm happy that you found us. <laughs> um, I'm excited to actually see your your projects this week too. We'll we'll touch a little bit more on that uh, in a little bit here to the audience, but um, yeah, I'm excited to see what, what you guys present this week too. So cool. All right. Um, and so coming into this course, uh, Nicholas, did you have any coding experience? Um, and whether you did or you didn't, did you kind of find that the bootcamp paced uh, that part well for people who would be true beginners? Yeah, I I had zero C sharp experience, which is what we used entirely in the bootcamp. Uh, I had HTML experience and a little bit of JavaScript, and that was it. So there were like a few things that I could pick up on or whatever, but yeah, it was entirely new for me. But the pacing and everything in the bootcamp was fantastic like real truly from the start the first thing you do which this is common everywhere is you learn how to type in a script that says hello world um and if you've heard anything about game development you know that, that is right where it starts um so truly it was right from the beginning right for the beginners and yeah i've learned so much since then amazing amazing I mean, I've heard it a million times, but I love, I love to hear it every time I hear that. So, um, cool. Okay. And then, uh, so what are the core areas and topics that were kind of covered in the bootcamp? Uh, obviously if, if anybody in the crowd is looking for a full breakdown, we can share information to get uh, the syllabus later, but, um, just from your experience, what are kind of the main core topics and, uh, uh, areas that you guys covered or are covering, I guess you're still in the course. Yeah, so to start, it went over like the basics of C sharp, right? Which you need to start. Uh, and then we went over like basics of Unity and stuff like that, just figuring out how to design a game as well as code a game. Um, and then as we got into like the more complicated stuff, we got into algorithms, data structures, and then we ended the boot camp with multiplayer stuff. So creating servers and client side games and all that kind of stuff. Very exciting stuff. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. So yeah, I mean, uh, and again, if anybody in the audience is looking for specific breakdowns, uh, I'll share some links later on so that you can request the syllabus and it'll give you uh, a breakdown of each of the, the different modules and kind of what you do and what the projects would look like. And um, so pretty, pretty cool, so. Um, okay, so uh, can you describe some of the benefits um, that a structured bootcamp would provide uh, compared to attempting to teach yourself uh, game development like online using just tutorials or things like that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it helps to have like that group of people that you can go to and double check, right? Like I know you can go to a forum and copy paste your problem that you're having and a million people can reach out to you, but it's so different to having someone that you can literally hop into a call with, like whenever they're available or you're available and talk to them. Like you don't need the cameras or anything like this, but you can have a conversation. And even from there, like it's so much better to figure it out on your own in a way, or to just like bounce ideas off of someone. Um, yeah, yeah, it was so much better having like the other people there as opposed to just watching a video and just like following along, like copy pasting essentially what they're writing on the screen as opposed to making up your own code. Absolutely. Yeah. And you, I mean, I'm going to ask you probably more about that in a bit, but um, networking is, is just huge because you get to kind of connect uh, with people. But uh, another thing I usually say and something that I've heard from uh, feedback from a lot of students is, you know, I, I tried to kind of teach myself a lot of these skills before I jumped into a boot camp and ended up kind of spinning my tires in the wrong direction a lot because they, you know, 
you'd find like specific niche YouTube videos on, on how to do one very small thing in development, but you don't have the full foundation yet. So it's, it's really hard to kind of understand what that means until you understand the core. Um, or they would just end up teaching themselves something that's not necessarily correct. And then they'd have to kind of unlearn and relearn again afterwards, just because they go down the wrong, the wrong rabbit holes of, uh, of info. So um, I always think like YouTube tutorials and things like that are incredibly beneficial, but they're more kind of a supportive thing once you already have the base level of, uh, of understanding and kind of the skill set there. So, um, so yeah, so just, uh, just another, another reason why the, uh, the boot camps are beneficial. Um, okay. So uh, speaking of, were there uh, opportunities for networking and connecting during the boot camp, and how did these uh, connections benefit you? Yeah. So many opportunities. Like, again, like you were saying before the discord, there are so many people in that discord and truly whenever you have an issue, you just put it out into the chats and everyone answers. Everyone is so supportive. And like from there you connect on LinkedIn, which just goes towards helping you appear better to recruiters and stuff on LinkedIn, but also like circuit stream holds events where they have the, the AMAs and everything that we get reminded about every time they're happening and they make it so easy for us to like register for them. Cause they're like, Hey, at everyone in the discord, here's the next event that's happening. And I, I know I signed up for all of them and I've um, connected with a few people on LinkedIn since then. Um, but yeah, it's so easy through this. Cause not only do you have your classmates and your instructor that you can connect with but you have all these alumni like people who have graduated and done this and have been doing this for years that you can connect with and talk to whenever amazing yeah it's uh it's a really cool supportive network and like you said people respond so quickly and i mean i i find that at circuit stream that's the case but even outside of that like in this industry overall uh game devs and game designers are pretty supportive of one another everyone wants to kind of help each other and um, especially if it took them a while to learn a, a really cool lesson, they, they want to make sure they kind of share that or pass it on to the next, next groups of, of devs or designers. So, um, yeah, just a really supportive industry, but our, our internal network would be no, no different there. You'll get uh, lots of response if you reach out and connect with people and, uh, and those can be connections for life. Like a lot of people will end up, uh, connecting with folks that they may end up working with and, you know, that might be their future career for the rest of their lives. So, um, cool. All right. So a few more questions here for you. Um, how did uh, regular feedback from the instructors and uh, collaboration enhance your learning experience overall? Well, I mean, getting feedback is the most important part. How can you improve if you're not getting feedback? Um, yeah, like it, everything was graded very fairly, I would say. Like all of our assignments and stuff was always graded very fairly. But then there would always be really good feedback as well. And even if your game was near perfect, there's always somewhere you can improve. And the instructor almost always had ideas that you could implement or improve on. And that just makes ev like every game that I've um, submitted for assignments and stuff, I've been able to make so much better just from ideas from not only the instructor, but from classmates too. Like I know after we finished our first assignment, everyone posted what they had done into the discord so that we could all compare and see what each other had done. And we all had ideas for each other. It was great. That's really cool. And I, a little bit of a side question, I didn't really prepare you for this uh, question, I guess, but uh, how was your instructor overall? What was, what kind of like, did you enjoy your instructor? <laughs> Yeah, there, there was a, a bit of a pacing issue when we first started. He was going very fast, but uh, Raphael is his name, but Raphael was amazing. Like so helpful in every way, especially towards the end when we got to the capstone. I had questions all day, every day, and he was always there to answer them. Like he would get back to me so fast and be like, of course, like this is something you could do here or in this way. And that was like so helpful. Like I would not have been able to finish my game without him. That's really, really cool. And that's uh, it's a good shout out too. We're actually, I'm going to be doing a session with Raphael uh, like this, but it's going to be a live interactive uh, coding gaming session. So I think uh, all the event registrants for that one, it's going to be on October 31st. And I think we're doing like a, 
a graveyard escape game or something along those lines. So uh, the I don't think the registration page is up for that one quite yet, but it should be up in the next week or so here. So uh, just kind of stay tuned, folks. Uh, look on the Circuit Stream website and uh, make sure you register for that one because you'll get a chance to actually meet uh, Raphael in person. Um, obviously, you can do that if you take the course too, but without uh, taking the course, you get to kind of meet him and uh, do a live game development uh, interactive build with him on the 31st. So and I tried to make it fun and Halloween-y and spooky for everyone too. So um, I might have to register for that too. Yeah, Sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, you'll you'll probably get an email just because you're at our network too. I'll make yeah. sure I email it out to everyone. But um, cool. Uh, all right. So what else did I have on here? Uh, what kind of career support is the uh, does the bootcamp provide? And are you excited for, well, what is, and are you excited for pitch day? I talked about it a little bit before, but maybe you could just kind of talk a bit more about that. Yeah, I mean, there's like a whole separate class for career stuff. Like you're doing all your game development stuff and all that, and then completely separate to that, there's a whole career class about writing a good resume, a good cover letter, how to sell yourself when it comes to LinkedIn or your portfolios. Like when you get into an interview, how do you go about showing yourself to these people, to these recruiters? Um, and all that is so special and so important, especially when I found out that there were uh, technical interviews. I didn't know that that was a thing until I took this class where they sit you down and they're like, all right, do this. I didn't know that was a thing. And if I had gone into an interview and sat down and they told me to do that, I think I would have shut down probably and panicked. Yeah. Um, but having that course was so important and so yeah. helpful. Just, yeah, preparing. Cause we get so many questions all the time and like, am I going to need to know lead code and um, is it going to be like interactive things or is it just going to be, and well, I'm going to have to prove my work. Like what's it all going to look like? And just, just even beyond that, like what does a general interview conversation look like for game development or game design? Like what are these companies looking for? How do they approach it? Is it usually friendly? Is it aggressive? How competitive is it? How can I make myself stand out? Uh, all these are things that we kind of uh, try and focus on in the career lab. So uh, again, I, I mean, I hear this stuff all the time, but I, I just love to hear the feedback when I'm getting it directly from a student too. And basically know that what I'm telling people all the time, that is, it's true. It's how, what we're actually delivering and how we're doing our courses here. So, um, all right. And, uh, I think I just have one more question for oh, you here. The, the pitch day stuff. Forgot oh yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry. Go ahead. So pitch day. Once you're finished everything, there's not even a month. It's not even been a month yet since I've finished the boot camp. Um, there's pitch day, which for me, it's in two days. Um, where you take your capstone project that you submitted, which you can continue to work on it from the month that you submitted it to now, uh, and you present that to recruiters and everything that Circuit Stream brings in um, to watch you. That's literally, that's why they're there, to watch you present. Um, and obviously I haven't done it yet, but I've watched a few or two I've watched two from previous cohorts and it's such like it's important but it's so good like it's helpful and good like you're able to sell yourself and get like an experience of trying to sell yourself for the first time um and like what better way to do that than by showing the game that you put so much time and work into and trying to show that and be proud of it like we've only done the practice so far, but I am already like so excited to show people this game that I've made and be like, I did this. This is a game that I made. So please hire me. <laughs> yeah. What you just said too is, is incredibly uh, valuable. Cause I mean, you're, you're going to be showcasing like the, the hard skills that you've learned and you're going to be able to say like, this is how I developed this and this is how I did that. But even more so like kind of what you just said, it's, it's how you're selling yourself or how you're presenting yourself out in front of people for the first time. Um, and it's, I mean, I can be guilty of it. I mean, I'm running a live event here. I always call myself like an, uh, an extroverted introvert where I can be extroverted all day at work. And then I go home and I'm, I'm actually kind of introverted, but, um, it's pretty common in game, game dev and game design, uh, that people are a little bit more introverted that a lot of times they can be, they kind of get in their space, they do their work. 
Um, so it's, it's not always a natural skill set to present yourself or to kind of like put yourself out there and, and go for, um, you know, interviews or just prepare yourself to kind of, uh, present your projects in front of people who are working in the industry. So I just, I really liked the way you said that because it's, uh, you know, you're, you're showing your hard skills, but you're actually kind of showing, uh, everything else too, and learning how to actually talk to people and, and get yourself out into the world and, uh, find some opportunities. So, um, I'm excited to see your pitch day too. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, so, uh, we, we invite, uh, industry people in, we've got, you know, connections, um, a whole bunch of different sort of gaming companies. Uh, we also teach courses outside of gaming, uh, which we'll also run, um, pitch days for those boot camps too, and like product management and design in different areas too. So, uh, but yeah, that's, that's a little bit on the, uh, the actual pitch days themselves. And then, uh, now I can, I can jump into the final question there. Um, so it was, uh, considering your experience, what advice would you give to inv individuals who are interested in starting their journey in game development? Um, and for those, I guess, even more specifically, who might be considering enrolling in a bootcamp like this one? Oh, man. I mean, do it. Like, do it. <laughs> it's like, for the price and everything, like, you really can't find an experience like this one except for here. Like, this is such like a unique opportunity that like, why not? Right? Like, even if it does, like, even if you get through it, and you don't immediately have a job, you still have this under your belt, and you still have this portfolio, and you can still grow on that. And you have like this experience to continue learning and building on that. And networking, like again, so many, there's so many people <laughs> that you can reach out to and just talk to whatever. So yeah, I would say do it. Just do it. Like, <laughs> yeah, that that could be the, I think the best advice I could give anyone. Go for it. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And yeah, I mean, I, I talk to recruiters all the time and, um, you know, it's every, every industry is competitive. Like when you're going in and you're trying to find junior roles or beginner roles, it's always going to be really competitive. So, um, but I just, I don't know, I talk to, to different companies and, and different recruiters all the time. And uh, I ask them honestly, like what, what types of uh, new, new hires are you bringing in? Are you bringing in um, people who are, you know, have worked for, for companies previously? Are you looking for brand new students who have some experience? Are you looking for university students? Are you looking for boot camp students? And uh, it's changed quite a bit over the years. I think um, university education used to kind of dominate most industries, um, whereas now uh, boot camp education, especially especially in the tech field, uh, is being viewed as uh, very very close. And a lot of people are getting hired over university students just because they have the the portfolios and the tangible skills right away. So um, I, I only say this just because we often get questions uh, about opportunities uh, for bootcamp students versus those who are taking university education. And I'd say that uh, there's there's a ton of opportunities for both. Um, the really positive thing is that there's way more opportunity for students coming out of things like boot camps now uh, than there likely would have been maybe 20, 30 years ago. Um, it's, just, it's just a different industry. And uh, a lot of our students are getting hired pretty quickly after they go through our courses. So uh, it's just a, just a cool little thing to add in there too. So um, I am going to share some additional information on our upcoming uh, courses, uh, pricing, cohort start dates, uh, and then Nicholas and I are, are going to do some uh, audience Q&A. So if anybody out there has any further questions for me or for Nicholas, uh, feel free to throw them into the questions tab now. And just give me a, a minute or two here. I'm going to share some information uh, about the, uh, the courses and stuff here. And then uh, Nicholas and I will pop back up and we can do the Q&A with you guys there. So. Um, so yeah, so just uh, hold tight off to the side there, Nick, for just a minute, if that's okay. <laughs> cool. Um, all right, so I'll start with uh, the schedules and uh, the course outcomes here. So uh, course schedules, oh, hang on, let me pull up my info here. There we go. Uh, so both the gaming boot camps are 30 weeks long and consist of five hours of live online instruction uh, per week. And that's via video conference and about roughly 10 hours of independent study. Uh, the great thing to note is that these live sessions are recorded and sent out to students in case you miss one or if you need to go back and review any of the topics or uh, information that was discussed. So similar to this session here today that's recorded and will be emailed to you afterwards. All of our classes are also recorded for our students. 
Uh, and another great perk is that the student alumni get lifetime access to the class recordings and materials. So uh, basically you, you get that and you don't, uh, there's no like time limit where, you know, a year later, if you want to go back and you're like, oh, what did that, what did my game dev course say in this module? Like, I, you know, something came up and I feel like the course uh, information that I didn't retain at the time would be uh, super beneficial or useful now. You should be able to go back and still access that uh, for life. So that's really cool. And then uh, I always say if if the only benefit of our gaming boot camps was a possible career in the gaming industry, then I personally think they would be worth it because I know what they they teach students. But I'm just going to share some of the other benefits here as well. Uh, the boot camps come with 30 weeks of instructor led classes, which include 12 technical and career labs and 10 one on one sessions. Uh, the boot camps uh, provide our students with a foundational game development and game design core concepts. Uh, they allow students to create and develop comprehensive portfolios using their own ideas. Uh, they connect students to a network of instructors and over 2,000 alumni. And as a part of the boot camps, like I mentioned before, um, Nicholas and I chatted about it, uh, we offer the exclusive private AMA sessions um, for the students so they can kind of connect with people in the industry there. And this is just a, a snapshot again. I know I shared this earlier, but this is just some of the people we had in for our AMA sessions this year or will still have. And a quick reminder, these are the key outcomes from the game development bootcamp. As you can kind of see, development skills, coding for games, architecture, uh, everything that you see on screen there, and then the additional uh, Unity Certified Associate badge uh, that I mentioned before too. And these are the outcomes for the game design bootcamp, design foundations, prototyping, uh, blueprints, uh, experience design, all that kind of stuff there is listed on the screen. And then in terms of pricing, uh, the regular price for both of the boot camps is $14,995. Uh, we do run early bird uh, windows for our courses. So as it currently stands, we have two different early bird uh, windows that are running. Uh, the 15%, sorry, is going to run through until October 25th or until the, the seats are filled. Um, I'm not sure how many seats we have left in our upcoming cohorts. So the best way to uh, check in on this is to connect with our admissions team. Um, if we don't have a seat available for the cohort that you're looking for, I'm pretty sure we can apply this discount for the following cohort for you instead. Um, but if the, uh, if the availability is there for you for this one and you register by October 25th, uh, you'd get the 15% off. Once that window ends, we move it to a 10% window. Uh, and that promotion would run straight through until November 22nd, uh, or again, until the seats are filled. So um, just a little bit on the uh, the pricing. We also offer uh, payment plans for our courses. So students can pay over like six, 12 or 20 month periods, uh, 24 month periods, I should say. Um, and the event discounts that I mentioned would still be applicable along with these payment plans. So you don't uh, forfeit the discount uh, when you're doing a payment plan, they would, they would work kind of in conjunction with one another. So. Uh, so that's a bit on the uh, pricing, the upcoming cohorts that we have, these, these boot camps run every five or six months, uh, but the upcoming ones that we have will be Feb uh, Feb September, <laughs> February, <laughs> putting two months together, February 11th through September 11th. And uh, that's for both of them, for the game development and the game design. And if you want to register for these boot camps, uh, I think on that last screen, Sorry, folks, I had the enrollment deadline of September 9th. That's uh, incorrect. That was a previous number or a previous date there. Um, I can check and see what it is. But if you just go to our website, circuitstream.com and click on the courses, it'll tell you the enrollment deadlines there. Um, the early bird windows are kind of the more important ones there that, that I'd focus on right now for the promotions. Uh, because these start in February, the uh, enrollment deadlines are probably in early February as well. Like they're, they're usually within a week or two of the actual start. So... And then uh, if you are looking to um, submit a bootcamp application or just download the course syllabus and take a closer look, these are all the QR codes for the uh, different web pages that you can go to. Uh, and these are connected through our courses with our university partners. So uh, you can hover over the screen right now with your phone if you like, uh, tap on uh, the one that you want and then tap the link and it should take you right to the course page. Uh, again, this whole presentation will be recorded, so you can always go back to this page on your computer and uh, scan the QR codes. Uh, you can also just search the information on Google and it should bring up the course pages for you there too. And yeah, if you have any questions, um, if you are looking to enroll uh, any anything, um, you can, like I said, you can go to the direct link and submit an application, but 
Uh, if you want to connect with the team here, if you have any questions, this is the easiest way to do it. Uh, admissions at circuitstream.com and uh, just reach out to the team. Uh, there's a team there that work on the university side and directly through Circuit Stream, and they can kind of answer any questions that you guys might have about um, availability, about course dates, about any equipment you might need for the courses, um, you know, all that kind of standard stuff. So uh, on that note too, the, the courses are beginner friendly for that too. You don't really need to have uh, high powered operating systems as long as you can kind of run Unity and Unreal. Uh, for the most part, you're, you're good. And all that stuff's free for the course too, which is cool. So, so that's it guys. That is uh, the presentation on the boot camps. Uh, we are gonna do some audience Q and A here. Uh, so I'm gonna close this screen and bring us back up here. And um, uh, Ali, I see that you added a question there. If you don't mind, just throw it into the questions tab. And uh, we're just gonna kind of go through uh, the questions in order here as they came in, but I can absolutely answer that one for you there too. Um, so I'll start off here with this one. Uh, so during the bootcamp courses, how often are teachers available to answer questions? I'm gonna let you answer that one, Nicholas. <laughs> All the, as far as I could tell, all the time. I could, yeah, I could email Raphael and he would get back to me within the day. Um, but even if, like, if your instructor isn't answering or something for some reason, which we all have lives, that's understandable. Uh, there's always Circuit Stream within, like, the learning website has, like, premium support tickets that you can write down your email and all your information and write down like a little description of what is happening or what you need help with. And they get back to you like within the day or the next business day. Like I was having a big issue with my capstone towards the end and my instructor was taking a couple of days. So I put through a support ticket and they got back to me the next day and helped me solve the problem. So it was great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we always try and find a way to, to make sure we're getting an answer to you guys as quickly as we can there. So I love to hear that. Um, all right, is a certain level of coding proficiency required for the game design course as well? Uh, I can I can answer this one here. Uh, the game design course requires uh, absolutely zero coding. Actually, we don't you don't touch coding uh, at all in the design course. Uh, but one thing I will say is, uh, as a game developer designer, it's often handy to to understand at some point in your career a little bit of the other side too. So. Uh, you, you certainly don't need to know it at all for the course, and you may never really have to encounter it as a game designer, but um, for communication levels, oftentimes with people who will be um, developers on your team, sometimes it's good to know a little bit of the lingo, but that can come later on. For the course uh, it, itself, you, you certainly don't need to know anything like that. So, uh, Do these boot camps run on evenings and weekends, or do they run full-time regular business hours for the full 30 weeks? So they are uh, evenings and and there's some labs on the weekends too. Is that right, uh, Nicholas? Ours were on Wednesdays. So it was Tuesday, Thursday was class time. And then every other Wednesday was a lab. Yeah, I don't know for sure. I know way back in the day, we used to run some labs on Saturdays. So that that could still be a, a, the case. Um, but the for the mandatory kind of classes that you'd be going through throughout the week, those are usually uh, evenings. And I think, yeah, like Tuesdays, Thursdays sort of thing. And oftentimes there's a few different time slots that you can pick from too. So I shouldn't really say evenings. I think there's uh, I think there's a few different time slots you can choose from for those too. So, um, and it would be considered uh, part-time. I mean, it is it is pretty full on and intense. Like if you're doing a full-time job at the same time as this, you're, you're gonna be busy for the 30 weeks for sure. And uh, you know, just mentally prepare yourself to, to be busy. And there's gonna be parts where you're gonna probably end up spending a bit more time and then other parts that you might kind of whip through a bit faster, but um, it is considered part-time and uh, most of our students uh, would be doing this in conjunction with like, their regular jobs or their, their work or whatever they have going on. So uh, for someone with pre-existing pre experience in game design and programming, uh, what would be reasons to do this bootcamp? Um, what could be expected to gain from it? Yeah, so Emmanuel, it would really depend on uh, what your previous experience is, uh, how recent it is, kind of what you've been doing. Um, if you just recently took uh, a course or if you finished a university program in game design, um, I don't necessarily know that this course would be the best fit for you because a lot of the information might be similar to what you've just recently learned. Um, but if you have some previous experience from years ago, if it's experience in different sorts of coding language and you've never touched C Sharp before, if you've never touched Unity or Unreal, um, 
basically what we try and do with our boot camps is teach the most up to date information. So um, that that might be a good reason for you, but it would really kind of depend on what your experience is and how current it is. If it's kind of been outdated a little bit, uh, obviously in these industries things move pretty quickly. So tools that we're using today uh, may not be used three years from now, five years from now. Uh, and tools that were used five years ago are probably not in a lot of cases being used today. So especially with, you know, advancements in AI and, and those sorts of tools coming in as well. So um, yeah, that's, that would be one thing I'd say. Uh, it just, it really kind of depends on where you're coming from and what your experience looks like. Um, but if you have recent experience and it's at kind of a high level, um, then the, the bootcamp might not be the best fit for you. But uh, I'd say maybe Maybe go to the course syllabus, take a close look at what's included, and then you can make a better uh, judgment at that point. Uh, if there's things that you don't know that you think you could benefit from uh, learning uh, from the boot camp, I should say. So, uh, all right, are all the courses online, or will we have uh, some in-person courses? Uh, so, the only in-person courses that we're offering at Circuit Stream right now is for our teen courses, our teen summer courses, uh, and those are at uh, UBC and UFT. But uh, outside of that, all of our courses are online. Uh, they are live taught in, uh, in a lot of cases. There's obviously a lot of work that you do in your own time too, uh, but they are live taught instruction. So you'll have an instructor there. You can ask questions. You'll be with your other classmates. Um, and it's not all just like kind of pre-recorded work, um, which I know uh, some of our competitors kind of focus more on just fully, fully pre-recorded. Uh, this is kind of a combo that we, we focus on at CircuitStream. Sorry, Nicholas, I'm just plowing through these questions. Yeah, one no, by one that's here. totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. And what is the game industry like in Quebec uh, and then compared to the rest of Canada? Um, amazing, actually. Uh, Montreal is one of probably, I don't I don't know if it's the actual gaming hub of Canada, but if it's not, it's it's like the second. Probably up there, yeah. Like, probably. As like I'm from BC and uh, Vancouver, BC. And this place, living-wise, has grown so expensive to survive and everything. So as someone who has actively been looking for jobs in Quebec, there is a lot. There's <laughs> tons. Like, even with like the big, big studios, like there's a huge EA studio, huge Ubisoft studio, huge Epic Games studio. Behavior. Like there's just tons up there. Yeah. So yeah. much in Quebec. Yeah, it's, uh, it's huge. I think they may have, when I was doing some research recently, I think they may have had the largest amount of physical studios in, in that province compared to anything else. I think Vancouver might, might be still considered the gaming capital of Canada, I think. I think it like wavers a little bit. Like there's so many smaller studios that are opening up in totally. both provinces. Totally. Um, but yeah, it's definitely up there. Yeah. So if, if, if nothing else, uh, hopefully this, this answer is giving you some confidence that it's, uh, it's, it's big, like if there's, there's just a ton of opportunity there. So, um, I can't say that it's the best, but it's, uh, it's competing to be, and it may be one day if it's not already. So, um, how many years has this course been around for? Will it be offered continuously for the next few years? Uh, yeah, our game development and game design courses have been around for years now, uh, in partnership with the universities. Uh, we don't see them going anywhere anytime soon. The only thing that might change is uh, the materials that we use in the course, uh, the lessons that we teach, you know, we, we try and keep that stuff up to date. So um, if you if you left today, Delilah, and didn't see us again for another two or three years, and you came back into this exact same type, type of session in three years from now, uh, I may be presenting the boot camps very similarly, but just kind of showing a bunch of different tools and hopefully some really cool AI tools and things that uh, that will be incorporated at that point. So, um, but yeah, we we uh, we don't foresee this going anywhere anytime soon. Um, this this education should be available for a while, uh, but if you want the early word discounts, that's a different uh, different thing. So, um, cool. So I think that is. Let me just double check the the chat. Uh, to see, yeah, Ali, that was the question and you had added that in there already for us. So I think we got everything there. Um, so yeah, if, if anybody has any questions for us uh, after the session here today, uh, just reach out to the admissions at circuitstream.com. Um, go to the website. I think we've got a chat bot there too. You can kind of connect that way, but um, yeah, feel free to, to, le to let us know if you have any questions about the courses. If you're interested in uh, checking the availability for upcoming cohorts, we can kind of let you know uh, how many seats we have and what that would look like. 
Um, but all that aside, uh, thank you guys for joining us today. Um, happy that we were able to kind of go through the, uh, the course info and share that with you guys. And uh, outside of that, a huge thank you to you, uh, Nicholas, for joining me today and, uh, and lending your time and letting me kind of pick your brain a little bit about your course experience. So thanks, thanks for coming today. Thank you for having me. And thank you, everyone, for coming and watching. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, good luck on your pitch day. You're going to do awesome. I will. Thank uh, you. <laughs> I will. I will be there to see it. So yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Uh, look for our upcoming sessions. Like I said, uh, we're going to do the interactive coding one right on Halloween. Uh, that's going to be available for registration in the next few weeks here. So look on, on our website for that. And uh, we'll hope to see you there. All right. Cheers, everyone. Have a great day. Bye.